Hi, I'm Antonio Mora. During China's Cultural Revolution in the 60s and 70s, Mao Zedong closed most schools and universities, destroyed religious buildings, documents, and artwork, and killed as many as two million people. Millions of others, including many teachers, professors, and intellectuals, were imprisoned, tortured, and humiliated. In the 70s in Cambodia, Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge's agrarian socialism demonized cities and intellectuals, leading to the infamous Killing Fields, a genocide where more than a million people were massacred, many of them professionals. I'm going to make a great leap now, if you'll pardon the Chinese Communist Party terminology, from the atrocities of Pol Pot and Mao to U.S. anti-intellectualism, but they're not wholly unrelated. Ignorance, anti-intellectualism, and the hate and intolerance they engender have played a role in inspiring mass murders in the U.S. They lead to tribalism, xenophobia, racism, anti-Semitism, and white supremacy. We've gotten used to criticizing the political right for its anti-intellectualism, often manifested in hyper-patriotism, a knee-jerk anti-scientific rejection of climate change, uncritical acceptance of traditional values as superior, and the feeling that only common folks can have common sense, not those eggheads cloistered in ivy towers. But anti-intellectualism is pervasive on the left as well, albeit in a different way. Liberals' unexamined adherence to the conventional wisdom of the coastal elites creates a dogmatism that disparages and often censors anyone who disagrees with their politically correct views. A new survey from Pew Research highlights another related issue. Confidence in higher education is plummeting in the U.S., with an astounding 38% of Americans saying colleges and universities have a negative effect on the country. That's a big jump from just from 26% just seven years ago. The increase in negative views comes almost entirely from Republicans and independents who lean Republican. In 2012, more than half of them believed colleges were a positive force in America. That has crashed, and now only one-third do. Those on the right are especially upset about professors bringing their political and social views into the classroom. In theory, though, that is what professors are paid to do. But academia, academia is heavily tilted toward progressives, and the list of grievances from conservatives about college policies favoring liberal causes is long. Those on the right also believe that colleges are overly concerned about protecting students from views they might find offensive, sheltering them from what they'll encounter in the real world. However, even a third of those who lean left don't trust college professors to act in the best interests of the country, and more than half of liberals agree with conservatives that higher education is going in the wrong direction. Another thing majorities in both parties agree on is that students are not being taught the skills they need to succeed in the workplace while being saddled with mountains of debt, only to then be overqualified for the jobs they find. Valid concerns. And intellectual snobbery can be a significant problem as well. Many great paying jobs don't need college educations. Plumbers, electricians, and carpenters don't get nearly the respect that they deserve, and many get paid very well. The cobbler down the street takes vacation much more often than I do and frequently to nicer places. But while politicians argue about how to deal with mass shootings, entrenched in their partisan positions, arguing about gun control, mental health, background checks, and even video games, it might be time to bring anti-intellectualism to the fore of the discussion. Respect for ideas, for others' opinions, for higher education, and for culture could go a long way to helping us resolve the many issues facing American society today.